this video, I'm gonna be eating very affordable, very expensive, and very medium priced pizza here in New York City. New York City is a city of over 98 million people. Literally, all people eat here is pizza. They have over 5.3 billion pizza restaurants. I've made up all these stats. I don't know anything about New York City except for that people here are fanatical about the pizza. Today, I'm gonna experience pizza in all forms, from the very, very affordable, all the way to a pizza that costs $2,000. How is it possible? I'm gonna find out. So, today's gonna be fun, packed with action. We're gonna meet the chefs, we're gonna see unique pizzas, and we're gonna hang out here in the city where dreams come true or where they come to die. Usually into that a little bit more often. But my dream of eating three different pizzas is alive and well. Let's go. We have come to our first pizza location of the day. This place is called Two Bros Pizza. What's special about it is it has dollar pizza. Dollar pizza is a thing you're gonna see all over New York City when you come here. But many places on the outside say they have dollar pizza, then you go inside and you see, oops, it's a dollar and seven cents because of taxes. Or it used to be a dollar and now it's a dollar fifty. Here at Two Bros Pizza, that is not the case. Somehow, here at one of the most expensive cities in the world, they are still selling pizza for one dollar a slice. But how does it taste? They must have skimped on ingredients or quality somewhere, right? Well, I'm gonna go in and find out. I'm blown away because New York City is one of the most expensive cities in the world, yet you have pizza sold here for a dollar. I thought it was a gimmick. I thought it was just to get people in the door, but you're actually selling pizza for one dollar. Yeah, we're selling a dollar, but we managed to maintain because we have like 14 different locations. If there was only one store, it wouldn't last. What is the most commonly ordered pizza? Probably the cheese or the pepperoni. Cheese are a dollar, pepperonis are two, so people usually go for those. What about the broccoli? Is that popular? Oh, uh, there's some people that do like broccoli. <sighs> It seems like throughout New York City, the dollar pizza is a trend. Like it's done all over the place. How much longer do you think that can last? I don't think we are ever gonna run out of business because here we make everything ourselves. So it's not like it comes in cans, stuff like that. That's why people come here rather than other $1 places. That's incredible. I'm excited to try it. I'm gonna get the cheese to begin with and then I might try some other slices too, so. Come on. Right here we have our first pizza of the day, the dollar pizza. I thought it was a legend, I thought it was a relic of the past and that it was no longer possible to make pizza that costs a dollar, but here it is. I'm really curious to make any profit off of this. We've got the bread, tomato sauce, cheese, not an abundance of cheese with this type of pizza. It's understandable, you're gonna see some bready parts and some tomato-y parts, but it doesn't look like they skipped. I'm gonna fold it in half, let's go for it. Oh, my hot, steamy, doughy, sweet, and savory tomato sauce, and a load of cheese. This is an unbelievable value. I thought the pizza was gonna be like that, but no, it's still a wide piece of pizza. That is about the best $1 can get you anywhere in the world. And right now, we're in one of the most expensive cities in the world. It's astounding. Of course, not everyone comes here for cheese. We do have a couple other kinds that we wanna try. I'll be right back. <laughs> Right here, both of these pizzas cost $3.50 each, so the price is going up radically if you want to get toppings. We have buffalo chicken, and then we have sausage and pepperoni as well. I'm gonna start with the sausage and pepperoni. Mmm, mmm, mm. oh yeah, that's awesome. The dough, the bread, it's thin, it tastes very toasty. The meat is incredibly juicy and oily, and it looks like maybe even more cheese on there too. This is like getting real big. That's very satisfying. Here we have the buffalo chicken, also $3.50. You can see the orange buffalo sauce on there, cube chicken, and lots of cheese. Mm. Instant classic. They have nailed the crust. It is thin, crunchy, and kind of crackery too. This is really spicy. It's basically just a pure buffalo sauce, so it's kind of tangy as well. It's got a little bit of vinegar in there, and then a bunch of big chunks of chicken. Very satisfying. My favorite is the pepperoni and sausage, but you could get three and a half of these if you just got the cheese. So you gotta figure out for yourself which one is gonna be the best bang for your buck. But for me, coming to New York for the first time, trying the most affordable pizza you can get here, this does not disappoint. But from here, we have a lot more pizza to see. We've just come to our second and most medium priced pizza location here in New York City. It's called Crave It. Here they have pizza toppings that you've never seen anywhere, like a macaroni and cheese pizza, a grilled cheese pizza, and even a Big Mac pizza. It looks like a pizza from Epic Meal Time. It's reckless, it's irresponsible, it should not be allowed in public, but we're going back there and we're gonna see how it's made. Let's go. Mm. 
Are you the creator of Craven? Yes, I am. It's different from a typical New York pizzeria, right? Yes, 100%. I wanted to do pizza, but I wanted not to just be like your typical pizzeria, which is great. But I wanted a way to stand out and be a little different because I love food. So I'm like, why not take my favorite foods and try to put them on pizza, but not just throw them on pizza, actually make them taste good. Chicken and waffles does taste good on a pizza if you make it the right way. You have that? Of course. That's here. Hell yeah. Oh my God, I gotta try this. It slaps really good. Love a pizza that slaps. What are some of your best sellers right now? Definitely the white truffle chicken, four cheese mac and cheese, Big Mac pizza, which I'm gonna give you a little taste of today. Is it called the Big Mac pizza? Uh, we call it the Notorious Biggie Mac. We give a little tribute to Biggie Smalls, who's from New York, and to the Big Mac. The tough part, I think, if you're gonna try to make a grilled cheese or a buffalo chicken, you have to figure out what is the essence of that food and then put that onto the pizza. For a Big Mac, to me, it would seem the essence is the beef, the cheese, but especially that kind of Thousand Island tangy sauce. Is that part of it? That's the beauty of it. So you have your own Big Mac sauce that you've created Biggie here. Biggie Mac sauce, Big trademark reasons. Don't get you're fine. Uh, big, biggie Mac. <laughs> McDonald's lawyers. Cool it. There's no money here for you. All right. I love what you're doing here. You managed to take pizza, put your own unique twist on it. I've never seen anything like this. There's so many different kinds I want to try, but first we're going to start with the Biggie Mac. We're going to jump back in the kitchen and take a look. Right now I'm in the kitchen with Harmesh and he's busy getting to work making the Biggie Smalls biggie pizza. Biggie Mac. Oh my God, I said Biggie Smalls. I'm gonna get sued again. Biggie Mac pizza. It starts with the dough. Look at the way this man works his dough. It's very nice, gentle, but firm. He lets the dough know who's in charge. Mmm. And then you gotta put some flour on the board. That board is gonna be delicious too. Lightly hand tossed. Step one, cheese. Big Mounds mozzarella. This is gorgeous already, I'm in love. I thought he was gonna start with tomato sauce, but no, it's starting with the cheese. So I'm excited to see where this goes next. Now the crust needs an egg wash. That crust is dirty. The only thing that's gonna purify it now is some egg wash. Right here we have some white sesame. Wow. So just like you would see sesame seeds on the top of the bun on a Big Mac, here they have sesame seeds on the outside on the crust. That is awesome. Here we have our seasoned ground beef. And that is a lot of beef. Now a completely different type of cheese. Here we have a mixed cheese. Wow. And that there is headed to the oven. While the pizza is cooking, I wanted to try a couple other unique flavors that they have here. First of all, this, the chicken and waffle pizza with real pieces of chicken and real pieces of waffle. You know, chicken and waffles, it's one of my favorite foods. It's this perfect combination of savory, salty, and sweet. Oh my gosh, it looks awesome. Let's go for it. I knew right away, I smelled it, and I loved it. It's like I'm eating pancakes and pizza at the same time. You've got delicious fried chicken, you've got big pieces of waffle, and all of it is just really coated in this glaze of sugary maple syrup. The only thing I can't tell is, is this a breakfast pizza? Is it a dessert pizza? Is it a snack pizza? Uncertain. I think you could eat this any time of the day. Here, we have the burria pizza. So burria tacos are a type of taco you'll find in Mexico. It's made with a stewed meat, and that meat gets put in the taco. In this case, it's put in the pizza, and then the juices that came out of that meat are used to dip the tacos inside of. But here, we're gonna be dipping the pizza inside of the stewed meat broth or stock. Oh, it's a sloppy mess. Let's try it out. It's incredible. It's amazing. Maybe it's because there's like a one inch thick piece of cheese on here. It is so cheesy. This is exactly how I'd make it if I was at home. Underneath that, that stewed beef has so much flavor. It's juicy, it's soft, it's tender. But then the broth right here, the stock just brings it all together. Two incredibly unique types of pizza, but we have one more on the way. Yeah, so right now the pizza is cooked and it needs to be sliced and it needs toppings. Step one, add fresh lettuce on top. Right here we have the next step, a bunch of buns. And on top, he's putting some of this mixed cheese. This will soon get melted. From here, it's all about the pickles. And actually, a lot of pickles. Our buns are coming out the oven. So from here, he takes the buns, he flips them upside down. Each slice gets two buns. Finally, it's time for that special mac sauce. And then some more sesame seeds on top. Finally, we've built up to our final medium price pizza. I'm coming in at $34. This is the Biggie Mac. Take a look at it. I was quite surprised to see that there's no tomato and no tomato sauce as a base. So basically, the base is just cheese. So this has cheese on it underneath. Look, the cheese is already melted on there. It seems like it'd be hard to bite through the crust and a bun. So I'm just gonna go for the bun. Let's try it out. So simple, but already so delicious. Just cheese and bread and that Thousand Island. Here we have the pizza. You can see the cheese, the beef, the sauce, the lettuce. Let's try it out. 
Oh my God, they have absolutely nailed it. It is like if a Big Mac had an incredible amount of molten cheese on it. I thought the pickle was gonna be too much. I thought it was gonna be too sour, but the pickle with this tangy Thousand Island with these big chunks of beef, oh, it is so satisfying. Today is gonna be a tough battle for who gives the most bang for the buck. This is something else. If you like the Big Mac and you like pizza, you're gonna absolutely love this. It is the exact crossroads between the two. They've captured the flavors, but it's still a pizza somehow. Love it. Absolutely love it. At last, we've come to our final location right here at the Industry Kitchen. Here, they are selling pizza that goes for $2,000. What could possibly go on a pizza to make it cost $2,000? I'm guessing maybe caviar, foie gras, gold, stem cells of a child, pages of Epstein's black book shredded into the dough. I don't know, but it's gonna be something very special. I'm gonna go inside now and find out more. Boom, we are in the kitchen. Yes, they actually let me into the kitchen. I'm here with Jonathan. We have all of our beautiful, lovely ingredients right here, and soon that is gonna become a pizza. Jonathan, let's do work. Industry Kitchen, what is this restaurant all about? We serve uh, wood-fired pizzas, so we have beautiful steaks too, like a three and a half pound a beautiful tomahawk steak, and we just have fun. All right, we start with some dough and we fold in some cuttlefish ink and that makes the pizza dough black. What is the most expensive thing on your menu? Most expensive thing right now is the gold pizza. Oh, so it is the pizza? Yeah. I thought maybe the tomahawk might give it a run for its money. Not even close. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we start with our garlic cream. This is a little bit on the nutty flavor and also keeps all the ingredients nicely on the pizza. I'm curious how often someone is buying one of these pizzas. We do about uh, one or two per year. Oh, that's it? Yeah. So right now we have a little bit of the mozzarella and then Stilton cheese. This gives a very nice umami flavor. Who is buying this pizza? So these pizzas are bought by people with camera crews, but also people who celebrate something. Celebrate what? Being a Saudi? Then we have to bake that about four to six minutes. Let's talk about ingredients. I'm curious how we get to $2,000 uh -huh. as a price tag. Pretty good margin on the $2,000? No, not really. So we imported this uh, Hudson Valley foie gras. It was my understanding that foie gras had become illegal in New York City. Not yet. It was scheduled, but there was a court hearing actually a week ago. But the people who are farming the duck, they won the case. So there's no uh, banning of foie gras yet. That's fantastic. Then we have edible gold. It's about $850 worth of gold on that pizza. Really? But I thought those little leaflets cost like a dollar. Like one time I went to Japan and they wrapped my ice cream in gold. No, not at all. Those are expensive. Yeah, we actually go to the jewelry district here in New York and buy that from a safe. It's edible gold, it's very special, it's super expensive. A little bit of flowers, and then we have beautiful caviar from Israel. What else? Truffles from France. Very good truffles are the best truffles, and that's pretty much it. I'm very excited. I hope I get some ROI on this video, but if not, it'll be worth the experience, right? Absolutely. Okay. Right here we have one of the world's most expensive pizzas that you'll find well, anywhere in the world. It's unique, it's very interesting, and actually it's put together more thoughtfully than I thought it might be. It is a visual, dazzling masterpiece. It's basically Avatar on a plate, except for it's 2D, because it's flat. The craziest part is the price, $2,000. Even when I went to Texas, we cooked a pizza that must have been 12 feet wide that could feed a whole orphanage, and that pizza was around $800. This is over twice that, and let me tell you, maximum two orphans, including me. There are some toppings here that I would really could consider having in any type of pizza. Foie gras, I love foie gras. I don't see why that couldn't be on a pizza. The truffle, sure, why not? The gold, fine, but it doesn't really have any bearing on the flavor. Here though, the fish eggs. Fish eggs are the most out there part of this recipe, but I trust the chef, he's confident. You can do almost anything with confidence, including starting a cult, which I plan to do soon. But first, let's try some pizza. Oh. First of all, the dough, amazing, thin, slightly bready, a very good base. Of course, you do not taste the cuttlefish ink, but you're not meant to. It adds some style and a little bit of pizzazz. From there, there's a ton of flavor. There's the garlic and the blue cheese. It's intense, it's rich. Then you want the foie gras, also rich and buttery. But let me take another big bite into that caviar. I really thought it would be fishy, briny, but it isn't. It's kind of a nice pairing to that rich blue cheese. It offers a little bit of salty brininess, but it's not overwhelming and it doesn't take over the flavor whatsoever. There's no way that should be good, but it is good. The caviar is such a gentle flavor. Maybe from here we pivot to a world where when you order, they say, do you want sausage, do you want pepperoni, do you want caviar? Caviar is just a slight $1,000 upcharge, no big deal. My biggest concern going into this was, is this just stunt food made for the purpose of making people spend tons of money, but it appears to actually function as a proper pizza. Some people in the comments are gonna be angry that this 
even exist for you guys. I want to say, let people have fun. The goal here was to show you something new, something interesting, creative, and innovative. These are chefs with serious reputations on the line. They would not put their name behind a pizza like this if they didn't think it was kind of yummy. And if they didn't think dummies like me would come by it once in a while. Today, we tried three different pizzas in New York City at three different price amounts of money. We had a very affordable pizza, a very medium price pizza, and a very, very expensive pizza. The most expensive food I've ever bought on this show by far. So, which one gave me the most bang for its buck? The answer may surprise you. I gotta say, I love the affordable place. It was delicious. What you get for a dollar, very impressive. The expensive pizza, it was fun to try. But the one for me that gave me the most bang for my buck, it was location two. They are novelty pizzas, interesting themed pizzas, but they work. They're delicious and they commit to the flavor. Next time I come back to New York City, I'm gonna make a beeline for Cat's Deli. And then right after that, I'm coming to this place for pizza. Boom, that is the end of the video. I wanna say a huge thank you to these two right here. We've got Ben, we've got Ming. They are both part of the Bing Buzz on YouTube. It's a fun food channel. They are exploring food in New York City and beyond. Please go give them a follow and check it out. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. <laughs> All right, let's do a taco tour. Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality, custom graphic inlay. And our street food around the world graphic tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A peace.